The coordination number is the number of bonds between the metal ion and all ligands. And uh, though other geometries exist, there are four main geometries that we will work with in Gen Chem 2. Those are going to be with coordination numbers of 2, 4, and 6. And uh, similar to Gen Chem 1, if there's a going to be uh, two, let's see, from Gen Chem 1, we had when there was two electron groups, the hybridization was sp, the shape was linear, that's the same. For four electron groups, the hybridization was sp3, and the geometry, the electron geometry was tetrahedral. Similarly, for uh, coordination number of six, so most of the answers are still the same. What is a little different is we have a second choice for four, and that means that in general, I'm going to have to tell you when there are four, uh, a coordination number of four, which will mean four ligands attached to the central metal ion, which one it will be. Will it be tetrahedral or will it be square planar? And square planar has a different type of hybridization, one that I don't think we've necessarily seen, and that is DSP2. Uh, or or uh, SP2D, and we'll show an example of that on the next page. Uh, so some similarities from Gen Chem 1. There we go. Now, um, the anti-cancer drug cisplatin shown here with its complex ion formula has square planar geometry. And a couple things about this. One is I do have to tell you this, although what you can know about this is that cisplatin, it's, let's see, so it's got uh, platinum, it's got, um, so it's got platinum. And that platinum is two plus. We know that because it has four ligands. Those are going to be NH3, NH3, Cl minus, and Cl minus. And it's monodensate. I don't know. I can just draw the one tooth, but I have a hard time not drawing the entire Lewis structure or Lewis dot formula for the chloride ion. Okay, so we've got four ligands. Two of those are Cl minus ions, which means that it's going to be a platinum two plus ion. Um, and then let's talk for a minute about why it is, um, or how we can sort of rationalize square planar geometry. First thing about square planar geometry is that uh, the D8 metals and those are going to be here on the periodic table most notably we will see nickel a lot do this and platinum so i'm not ruling out seeing uh, palladium do that as well so tends to be platinum and nickel and uh, for this particular one, let's go ahead and do platinum. And we're going to do platinum electron configuration for the platinum atom. And again, we can always refer back to our periodic table. Here is platinum. It's going to have an, uh, no, a noble gas core of xenon. Then it's going to go from, to 6s. Then it's going to hit the uh, first asterisk and go down here to the 4s. Then it's going to come back up and hit the 5D. So it's going to have uh, xenon, and it's going to have 6S2. Uh, then it's going to have, um, sorry, 4F14. Then it's going to have 5D8. 
And uh, from there, it turns out that platinum is an exception for reasons that we don't necessarily understand. So it's going to be uh, 6S1, and then it's going to be 5D9 and 4F14. So that is an exception. And it is an exception that you do not have to know. Uh, there were some exceptions from Gen Chem 1, like the chromium, molybdenum, molybdenum atoms, copper, silver, and gold, but you don't have to know these. All right. So now let's go ahead and do the platinum um, 2 plus ion. The core electrons for xenon won't change, but we're going to take the highest energy electron. That's going to be from 6S1. And then when we take that one electron away, we're going to take one electron away from the uh, 5D. That leaves us with 4F14, 5D8. And uh, what tends to happen pretty regularly for these is that uh, the eight electrons go into only four orbitals four of the 5d8 or the 5d orbital leaving one open And uh, this is definitely an exception. And this is an exception that we don't have to know. But if we were to then look at the 5D orbitals of this, we got one, two, three, four, five. Ordinarily, what we're going to see is that those 5D orbitals uh, with the ligand, so this is 5D from Gen Chem 1, and that these 5D orbitals are going to have a different layout now because of the, uh, sorry, because of the ligands, and they are now going to be uh, 1, 2, three, four, I sort of ran out of space here, because the fifth one is much higher. Fifth, five, the orbital is much higher. So we'll talk more about why that is, but it turns out that all eight of the electrons Fill the bottom four orbitals, leaving the top orbital open. And that is the first orbital that is hybridized when we do the um, when we do the hybridization with these ligands. So and remember this this is going to be just the same thing as when you do hybridization with um, Gen Chem 1, you're going to look at the open orbitals, you're going to then hybridize them, and what's different is that for, and I'm going to actually put it up at the top now, uh, DSP2, it turns out that's the square planar hybridization, and you can see that there's one of the D orbitals here, now I've got a one more color, there's one of the D orbitals here, Hmm. Um, one of the D orbitals here, let's go away from that color. That's the black. One of the D orbitals here, and then the next orbital is going to be 6S, and then the next orbital is actually going to be 6P, and there are three of them. That's where this hybridization comes from.